Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Tui. I work with IES as a business development manager and i um, just like to say welcome to our VE 2016 webinar here this afternoon. Um, today I'm going to cover some of the new functionality and features that have been added into our VE software in our latest VE 2016 release. So I'm going to um, do this webinar today by jumping in and out of um, some slide um, deck that I have and the VE software itself just to demonstrate some of the functionality. So what we've added in um, recently in the model viewer is the ability to add in scenes and scenes allow you to define and save multiple view positions and parameters as scenes and the easiest way to um, show you how that works is to just show you the scenes in the software itself. So I know there's a mixture of people um, on the webinar today, some existing VE users and some who are new to the VE software itself. So in order to view these model scenes, uh, that's done using our model in application, you need to open the model viewer 2. And um, what I've done here in model viewer 2 is I've actually went ahead and created some scenes already for the webinar today. So um, simply put, the scenes allow you to save different view positions within the model viewer too, and also um, different, you can actually add the sun path and the shadows to show uh, the shading and the sun path at different times of the day. So to demonstrate that, I've just added in three scenes here at the bottom. One is called um, June 12 p.m., June 2 p.m., and June 4 p.m. And you can see as I toggle through the different scenes there that both the sun path and the shadows are, cha are changing on the building uh, that I have loaded up into this project. It's quite straightforward to add new scenes. You just need to um, right-click uh, the, the bar down at the bottom there and click Add Scene. And uh, once you have added the scene, then you can change um, either the view position or, or the, the month of the year or the day or the time. So just to, to walk through that, I'll just uh, give you a quick example just for September. And uh, I'll change the day to, uh, let's say, the 10th. And I'll start off uh, maybe at... Hmm... I'll start off at 12. Oh, what's happening there? Okay. That's better. So I'm just going to save one uh, a view position here for 12 o'clock, which sh shows the sun path and the shadows. And I can rename that by right-clicking and clicking Edit Name. Let me call this maybe September 12 p.m. Then just uh, click enter on your keyboard just to save that change. And then I'll add in another scene and I'll rename that September 2 p.m. And click uh, type enter on your keyboard again. And I'm just going to change uh, the time then to 2 p.m. And what I've done now is I've created two scenes with the, uh, the view position saved the sun path and the shadows. And the good thing about this feature is that uh, you can save the scenes as images, which can then be used uh, in reports. So I'll just call this a test, and they're saved as a .bmp file, and I'm just going to click Save. And what that's done now in my project folder, it's actually saved all these image files, which can be used later on and in reports. And to just say uh, that we're going to add this add in this functionality as well in uh, Macroflow Viewer and, and Vista Pro as well. So I'm just going to move on now and show you the next feature. Um, which is um, the select and assign feature. So we've actually went and refined that um, select and assign uh, feature. I'm just going to do something here to help me. I'm just going to minimize uh, this in a second. 
Okay, so um, in our, what we've done here on this is that we've, we've added a clearer user interface for easier understanding and we've added in some enhanced functionality to allow you to better select and define your criteria. So I'm just going to show you what that actually looks like um, in, in the software itself. So anyone who's used this feature before, uh, the icon is contained within the model application up on, in, in the toolbar and it's called Select Opening by Criteria and Assign Fabric. So if I click that now, you, anyone who's used this before will notice that the, the UI has actually changed. It's a lot neater and easier to understand and it follows a similar um, use case that you just need to select the opening, whether it be a window or a door, and then you can uh, match the opening uh, selection by either area, construction, macro flow type, sill height, orientation or slope. And what I can do then is I can match, uh, I can select rapidly uh, openings that match the criteria that I've defined here. And not only can I select those uh, opening types, but I can also change either the construction or the macro flow opening type as well. And then I can assign them here as well. So you can see here that it's actually went ahead and assigned that construction type to 53 different openings. So um, something else that we've added in now is we've made a good few changes in Apache HVAC. Uh, we've added in a new systems parameters dialog which adds improved access layout, labeling and editing of airside system parameters and this is falls under the integrated system management and what this really replaces is the old spreadsheets and the old simple ISM uh, interface and we've also added in the SONS tabular edit dialog which is a spreadsheet-like tabular interface for editing, reviewing and uh, quality assurance of your project. So the easiest way uh, is to just demonstrate that in, in the VE software itself. So what I'll do now is I'll open Apache HVAC and um, I'm just going to open a HVAC system that I created earlier. It's just a very straightforward system. So the new systems dialog or systems parameters dialog can be accessed by double clicking uh, the, zone, the system here. And we can see now uh, instead of the old spreadsheets, we have a nice new slick interface uh, which has a number of tabs that allows you to, to, uh, to edit uh, the parameters for your particular HVAC system. Uh, on the air side. You can save or, and assign different various different values to, to your project. We've also added in, as I said, the zones tabular edit. Again, this replaces the, the old spreadsheets where you can actually see the loads data here for the various different rooms in, in the zones. You can check the, all the cooling set points, cooling loads, uh, various different system parameters, uh, air exchanges and exhaust, cooling airflows, heating airflows, design airflows, and you'll actually see uh, any information that's been auto-sized as well appear in here. Okay, so I'm just going to move on quickly and talk about the new feature that's another new feature that's been added to Apache HVAC. And that's, I'm just going to show you that through, through my slides here. Um, which is some additional features and one of those is that um, we now have color coded uh, dialogues that will change so for example um, the, the box surrounding your HVAC system will, will change um, from grey to green if the auto size has been completed and size values have been assigned to all the components in the system and the controllers uh, in the in the airside system in this instance, and what this does is it just it's a, a visual way to sort of check the progress of your particular project. And you can imagine if you had lots and lots of different uh, zones uh, assigned, um, sorry, HVAC systems in your project. Also, some other additional features is that we have replaced the ASHRAE 62.1 Table 6.3 method uh, for ventilation calculations. We have more support for demand control ventilation 
and uh, we've also added support for users working with ASHRAE 170 healthcare ventilation requirements. And we've also added the possibility to enter different and sometimes competing ventilation methods in various zones of the system. And we've also support for both uh, SI and Imperial uh, units as well. So one last thing that we've added here on the chillers is that we've uh, allowed our users to specify an independent profile defined load directly on the chilled uh, water load. We can also use freeform profiles from Ergon. So anyone who hasn't heard of Ergon before, that allow, this is a cloud-based tool that allows you to bring real operational data uh, into the virtual environment and you can bring that data in um, from a number of different sources, for example from um, you know, uh, electric meters or gas meters or temperature sensors and you can bring all that information now uh, into the VE software. So um, we've also added uh, more chiller curves in the software and this is in the beta version so for anyone who wants to try out that they should contact beta at iesve.com and this information is fully editable and you can edit uh, the graphs either and they can be visualized in 2D or 3D. So um, anyway, just before I move on from the Apache HVAC I know I breeze through a lot of the stuff there because uh, I don't have a huge amount of time today but anyone who'd like a more detailed walkthrough um, of the new Apache HVAC features and um, they can contact me or uh, our, our sales or support team and our contact information will be provided at the end of this uh, webinar so just again anyone who wants a more detailed walkthrough the Apache HVAC and the new features uh, I'd advise them to to contact us, and we we can arrange uh, you know either a one to one or um, a small group uh, web demo session of that. Thanks. So I'm just going to move on now, and rather than continuing on with 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 these slides, I'm just going to jump out and go on to uh, the VE software itself. And one thing that we've added is the ability to edit the room groups directly in our tabular room data feature. So um, I'm just going to select a bunch of rooms here. And what we can do now in, in the room basics tab, uh, sorry, in the room groups tab, is that we can actually create new, new room groups now directly in tabular room data. And uh, previously what people would have had to do is create the room grouping schemes here in this, this old dialog box, uh, which has actually been upgraded as well. But you now have that functionality directly in tabular room data. So you can create a new, a new group directly in tabular. And you can then assign that to, to all your rooms. One other thing that you can do is that you can also um, assign all template types, term and macro flow, directly in the tab edit dialog now. And that's in the uh, room basics room type. You'd have to be in Apache for that. Yeah, you can you can do that directly in here now, provided that you have the term of templates uh, selected. So, um, one other feature that we've had that's going to be coming soon is uh, simulation management. It's currently in, in beta form, so what this does is it allows you to uh, run multiple simulations at the same time and check their progress. It will allow your software to use as many cores that are available on the computer that you're using. And it automatically pushes multiple runs across those cores. And you can also uh, add greater priority to, to different simulations that are running so they'll finish sooner. And you can also receive email notifications um, on completion. So just some other uh, small features that we've added. The, groups, the grouping schemes library 
um, is is has been improved and there's some enhancements there. So um, I'll show you what you can actually do now. You can um, import these grouping schemes from other projects or a library and you can create new uh, grouping schemes based on a copy of those selected. So to just show you what that looks like here, um, again this room grouping schemes uh, dialog has had some enhanced functionality. So really what you can do is you can import grouping schemes from another project or you can uh, export grouping schemes from the project that you're working on. And what you can do as well is you can create um, new grouping schemes uh, from those selected. So what this has done, it's created rather than just added a new grouping scheme name, it's actually saved all those groups uh, contained within the grouping scheme as well. And you can then, then edit them accordingly. Another nice feature that we've added in as well is uh, the ability to uh, search for uh, room names directly in the model browser. We've added in this search feature here. So for example, if I wanted to find all those rooms containing the text stair one, can enter that into this search bar here and then just click enter. And uh, the software then will directly find those rooms for you. So this is a, a nice uh, feature that saves a lot of time if you're trying to find a particular room uh, in your 3D geometry. I'm trying to think of another one, if I just wanted to find all the cellular offices, equally I, I could do that as well. And the software will open up them for you and this also saves a bit of time as well in the refresh rate um, on your model browser. We've also added in um, I jump back to uh, my slides here. We've also added in uh, real calendars and although this is a small update it's an important uh, feature for operational modeling of buildings. So if you want to sync operational data which is based on real calendars that contain uh, you know leap days and stuff like that, that this will actually line up nicely now with your simulation calendars. And real climate can also be included, and this is recognized by the simulations, and um, it's also recognized in, in Vista Pro as well when you want to select the results, even for those leap days. We've also added in a content manager now into VE 2016. can be accessed by clicking tools and then content managers. And basically any report now that's generated within the software it will appear in this content manager and it will be time stamped. So you can run uh, various different simulation scenarios and reports associated with them and you have them all now uh, in a nice uh, compact space that uh, it's very easy to find them. So for example this, this slide here demonstrates some of the reports that might appear uh, in your con uh, content manager. But just to um, demonstrate that example, if I was to run, let's say, a very simple steady state uh, calculation here for heating and cooling, and um, I'll just give this um, a, a different name, and then just run that simulation. And now, if I was to uh, access one of the various reports that can be generated in the VE software, for example the heat and cooling report, we now get a pop-up message telling you that a new entry has just been added to the content manager. And you can close that down or you can open the content manager directly. And what will happen now is that all the um, reports that have been generated um, will actually will appear now in, in the content manager. So we can see a couple of reports that were generated earlier today and the one that's just been generated now. And where that would be useful, for example, this was a steady state calculation run earlier on today. If I double click that, you'll see the reports changed and actually the outdoor um, winter design condition there is 4 point, minus 
then I ran another calculation and generated another report that had a different uh, outdoor winter design temperature and then you can check the results and, and how they compare and um, these um, reports can all be opened directly in, in the PDF viewer as well so that's the, um, the content manager then we've also um, done some uh, enhancements to the OpenStreetMap import and we have added an area selection improvement and we can now import an area defined by uh, different sh shapes such as a rectangle or polygon uh, previously we just had a circle and new formats are also uh, supported as well so I'm just going to demonstrate that now if I was in Modelit anyone who's not familiar with OpenStreetMap it can be it's a free <clears throat> open source tool where people populate geometry information uh, for various different cities across the world and we've uh, integrated that now into our VE software so anyone who wants to bring in that freely available geometry information into their VE software to model uh, perhaps surrounding buildings that might be surrounding their new uh, proposed development they can do that it's very simple to do you just need to uh, type in OSM in the model it uh, key in command here once you do that if you click enter it'll open up a new window which allows you to search for a particular location so for today I'm just going to search for London and it will show me all the Londons that have appeared here if I double click the one uh, in UK and zoom to that location I can see uh, a map of London now and what, I, what we can do now uh, is we can um, trace around shapes around this map to bring in only selected geometry previously we could only uh, bring in a, a defined perimeter or a certain radius but now we can actually uh, trace around particular areas using either a rectangle or a polygon and then we can save and import that particular any geometry available in OpenStreetMap directly uh, into our software so that's just um, loading up there now so what I've done is I've brought in all the geometry information for for um, that selected area in London I'm just going to open the uh, model viewer 2 again so we can see uh, all the geometry information that's been brought in from that selected area in London so that's a nice feature uh, which allows you to bring in only selected areas of geometry uh, reduces the project file size as well and it will um, won't slow things down as well so you don't have to bring in larger areas so um, I think that's all for uh, today now on, on the new features I'm just going to show you this slide uh, with my contact information so anyone who has uh, any queries about the, the webinar today they can <clears throat> contact myself at daniel.tui at iesve.com um, or they can contact sales at iesve.com anyone who is interested in trying out a beta version of um, the uh, Apache HVAC um, features or the, the multiple simulations as well uh, they can contact beta at iesve.com and for any other support related queries uh, you can contact support at iesve.com <clears throat>